From Boston? Yeah. Yeah, are you excited to go to the Open? Have you been already or not yet? We went yesterday. Yeah, was it fun? Yeah. Good, and you brought this big tennis ball. You know, I think my game would improve dramatically if you would lend this to me. What do you think? Although you've got lots of signatures, so have fun at the Open. You're gonna go another day? No. Oh, that's it? Yeah. Okay, well, I hope you had a fun. Nice to see you. Up next, the story of one teenager's determination to beat the odds, but first, this is Today on NBC. This morning on Today's Health, an incredible story of battling the odds. Two years ago, Molly Farrell, a teenager from Wheaton, Illinois, was seriously injured during a routine swim team practice. I was on the swim team for four years, and I was 13 the year of my accident. And that day we were just practicing starts off the diving blocks. And I, on like my third or fourth dive, I think I went too deep and hit the bottom. Molly's mom, Nancy, was on her way out the door when the phone rang. It was a mom from the pool calling to tell me that Molly had been hurt. And I asked how badly she had been hurt, and they said that they had called the paramedics. I had no idea when I got to the hospital what had happened to Molly. Molly had a spinal cord injury at the C5 level and was paralyzed from her triceps down. I asked the surgeon, for odds, and he s explained to me that he didn't like odds, that there were not 100 Molly Farrells, and there were not 100 accidents just exactly like hers. But he said, if you push me for odds, he said, I would have to tell you she has a 1% chance of ever regaining movement. Having heard this information from these doctors, we were, we were scared to death. Uh, we had a, a daughter that was 13 years old that only days before was in very good shape, very athletic, very active. And now we're being told that our daughter isn't going to walk again. And I remember turning to Mike and saying, Molly is that 1%. Molly is the fighter she needs to be. And that was our belief through the whole thing. Molly spent the next 18 days in intensive care, and then her parents had her transferred to the Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago. They picked RIC for Molly's therapy because at that time, the hospital had one of only three locomat machines in the country, a machine which can help retrain paralysis patients to walk again. The problem was RIC required a patient to have some muscle movement in their legs before they could begin using the device. But six weeks had passed since the accident and Molly's condition hadn't changed. They told us that each day meant that if there was no movement, that we had to be prepared that there might not be any movement. And I remember at that point feeling a little overwhelmed that she just had to move. Then the family got a break. Molly moved one of her toes. I think she moved her toe a total of four times and that was the end. That muscle just wouldn't move again. But that small movement was enough to enable Molly to use the locomat, which was what the Farrells had hoped for from the beginning. The advantage of the locomat for training patients is that therapists don't have to get down next to the patient and move their legs over and over again in repeatable fashion. Sorry. That's okay. And therapists get really tired after doing that for maybe five or ten minutes. The locomat can continue to train someone for up to 30 to 45 minutes and the information coming from the legs going to the spinal cord is really important for retraining walking. The first time Molly was in the local map, she started walking and she turned to all of us and started laughing and smiling and she said, it feels so normal. And she was so excited. Every time she would work on the local map, either later that night or the next morning, she was able to move some finger or foot or, or move something more than she could the day before. Even though Molly was using this machine to work on walking, she still was unable to sit up or stand on her own. <laughs> but that didn't discourage her. Molly was one of the most motivated people that I've ever worked with. From day one of her injury, I would ask Molly to try to practice balancing herself sitting up for 10 seconds and she would aim for 20 seconds instead. Good job, Molly. I had a lot of points in there where I just wanted to give up and stop doing what I was trying to do, but I would just take a break and calm down and then 
try it again and keep going till I eventually got it. Her determination paid off. Four weeks later, Molly took her first steps without the assistance of the Locomat. I think I took three or four steps, but still, <laughs> it was exciting. Wow, that was awesome. Yay. Those few steps led to many more. And one month later, Molly was able to walk out of RIC. Hey, Mal. Way to go, hon. Her walking, you know, those legs moving. I don't think there was a dry eye in the place. It was amazing. Um, you know, it was just that day that you'd hoped for. But the long walk to the car was far from the end of Molly's journey. When Molly left RIC, we were still doing almost everything for her. We were dressing her, bathing her. She was able to eat on her own. But as far as her personal hygiene, we were doing all of that. Good job, honey. It's been two years since the accident. There you go. Molly continues to go to therapy three days a week. And she's come a long way know the drill. She now can take care of herself. She can walk anywhere and she wants to. That looks good. And she is now at the point where, as part of her therapy, we have her walking without any crutches at all. You're doing great. But Molly is only able to walk without crutches for very short distances and needs to have someone by her side. But neither Molly nor her family are even close to giving up hope. When I think about how far I've come and how much I've done, I, 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 get, I guess I get proud. <laughs> um, I get excited. But I know like I still have a lot more to do and to keep working. I really want to just be like everyone else and not have to use my crutches and just walk on my own. What a trooper. Keep up the good work, Molly, and we wish you all the best in your continuing recovery and lots of love to your family, too. We'll be back in a moment. This is Today on NBC.